Dave Jones was, was born in London and trained before the First World War as an artist at the Camberwell School of Art. His father was Welsh um, and his mother was actually from a Cockney, really, from the docks of Rotherhithe. And then in January of 1915, he enrolled and served in, on the Western Front for almost three years. Always as a private, he was offered a commission, but he never wanted to move up to the officer class because he so enjoyed the company of his comrades, the camaraderie. And he also managed to find time to do lots of very deft and rather brilliant little sketches of the trenches of his companions there, of this strange wasteland that they inhabited. War was an indelible theme that ran throughout his life. Some of his later works are very much about war, about wounding, about sacrifice. In his later paintings, there are many sort of echoes of his time in the trenches. Many of them feature trees that are lopped, that are blasted. Um, there is wire and briars that run through many of his works. Um, there are horses that, you know, that bear echoes of the horses that he saw on the Western Front. He first visited Wales when he was about nine years old, and although in his entire life he probably only spent about two years in Wales, it was a very, very important part of his sort of cultural makeup and influenced him profoundly. He was an extremely varied artist because he was so sort of multi-talented, but he also, in his 30s, becomes a major poet and writer. He was very slow, in fact, to learn to read. Surprisingly, as he became enormously erudite and extremely widely read in later life. I think what is distinctive is really the uh, imaginative depth, the range of later, particularly mythological reference. But he actually works in a, a, a huge variety of media in watercolour, oil painting, engraving, wood engraving, copper engraving, and later painted inscriptions. But he started out being able to draw very precociously and very well, and the first work in this exhibition is a, an extraordinary painting he made at the age of seven of a lion, which is, is full of feral, pent-up energy. His sense of line and composition were outstanding. Um, and then he moved into painting watercolours, some oils, but mainly watercolours, and his works became more and more sort of freighted with myth and illusion. And towards the end of his life, he started making very, very beautiful inscriptions, painted inscriptions on paper, which initially he made as messages to friends, as Christmas messages, sometimes birthday messages, celebrations of various sorts, but then he started to develop them in their own right as works of art. Uh, he called it making a shape in words and he declared that it was uh, really the same as trying to put together a painting, that it was a sort of carpentering of, of words. His reputation has uh, sort of gone in and out of focus. By the mid to late 1920s, he was very successful. He was part of the 705 Society, which was the most avant-garde exhibiting society in London, alongside Ben Nicholson, who recruited him, Christopher Wood, Ivan Hitchens, Kerry Richards. He was, at that point, very much in the swing of the London art world. His first book, in parenthesis, uh, won the Hawthornden Prize for Poetry, the, the, the major prize uh, and he was hailed by T.S. Eliot and saluted by, by Yeats. And by the 1930s, he was being championed by uh, Kenneth Clark, who was the very young director of the National Gallery. And they became close friends. And Kenneth Clark described him as probably the most interesting of the young British artists. But he, was, he wasn't really part of the literary world as such. Despite the success of, in parenthesis, and the, and the great accolades that came to him. As a painter, he was being shown in international exhibitions at the Venice Biennale uh, and in touring exhibitions. He suffered the first of several breakdowns in 1932, severe breakdowns, which uh, 
sort of crippled his uh, output. He wasn't producing nearly as much. And then in 1947, a second uh, breakdown. He was increasingly suffering from agoraphobia, that is to say, fear of open places, and tended to just stay in one room, living in one room in Harrow on the Hill for the last 30 years of his life. And he changed houses about three times. Uh, but he painted the views from the window. He was writing a lot um, and still occasionally exhibiting his, his drawings of trees, his wonderful paintings of flowers in glass, chalices, and making his painted inscriptions. But his health uh, wasn't good. He kept all his faculties. He was acute, in, mentally acute, but uh, when he entered his 70s, he was uh, more frail and, as I say, hardly going out at all. By the 1950s, uh, he was less in the public eye, producing fewer paintings. His poetry is, later poetry is quite difficult, and so he rather um, disappeared from the scene for the general public, but always had a very strong following of passionate admirers. And of course now we hope to bring him back into view for the general public.